did you find it difficult to play somebody who is so multifaceted? There's so many different parts of his personality. And on top of that, you had to play the characters in the film as well. Yeah, well, the characters were in a way the easiest thing because you had, a, 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 you know, you had them there and you could watch them and you either you're doing it right or you're doing it wrong in a way. Mm. You just have to aim as close to that as you can. For him, it was much more of a challenge because, like you say, he's there, there's no real clear depiction of what he is. You know, mm. you try and find footage of him in interviews, and but literally, he, he'll be a different person. In you watch one interview, and he'll be in this perfect kind of BBC mm. voice, and then you watch another one, and he'll be totally scouse, and then another one, and he dips in and out of his characters. So, and also for for ninety minutes, he's in every scene, so you can't sustain an impression for that amount of time. So. Yeah. The way I went about it was just literally trying to feed in as much as I could get, you know, just try and take on board everything and then kind of hold on and let it come out in Absolutely. a way that sort of made sense. But, um, yeah. but was it difficult to play sort of, the, you know, the Sid Snots and the Cupid Stunts? And did you do the Bee Gees? And... Yeah, the, I loved the Bee Gees. The Bee Gees were one of my favourites. Um, I mean, the characters were so much fun. And as soon as you, as soon as you put the gear on, mm. you know, as soon as you get those costumes on, you just... It was so exciting being in that kind of white cycl cyclorama soundstage mm. and having the having the gear on and you know making the crew laugh and you really felt with those sort of things you were kind of trying to capture the spirit. In fact, there's a bit right at the end of the film, after the credits. I keep watching after the credits where there's a little moment with Marcel Wave, one of the characters, and I'm I'm so pleased they kept it in because it's a little ad lib mm. that we did, um, you know, kind of at the end of the day. But at the end, you can hear all the actual crew laughing. And for me, that's one of the bits that is so him. Because well, he that's was so, what it was all so about. groundbreaking. I mean, yeah. the, 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 when he left the BBC and went to Thames, mm. it was green screen. It was it was crew interaction. Yeah, it's all, all the stuff the that youth TV is today. Yeah. And he was pioneering it. I, f I found it, I, had, I heard a great story, which I think sums him up quite well, about all the crew appearing in shot. Apparently... I can't remember how much it was, but every time they got they appeared on screen, they got something like an F, extra fifteen pounds a week or something. <laughs> so he was always getting nice. them in, and I just think that's that really sums him up. He knew that they'd get yeah. more money, so he would just drag them in and get them on screen and give them a little bonus. Yeah. I, I read this thing that Barry Cry said, where he said that the reason why the show was originally picked up was Kenny was on the radio, and it was mm. just going to be a music show, and he was going to yeah. do the links. Yeah, yeah. And then literally no one was keeping an eye on it, and the links got longer and longer, and longer <laughs> the bands right, got shorter, yeah. and before it was the, you knew it was the Kenny Everett show. Yeah, it was. It was sort of the, the kind of the gaps between the, you know, between the songs became bigger than the songs themselves, and it, and it just turned into this, you know, morphed into this... And that's, I guess, that's why it's such a straight, you know, unique thing because you watch it and it's just, it's so contemporary now. You know, for mm. us as a as a generation of, kind of YouTube and Twitter and disposable instant, um, you know, it, it, it's built for our generation. You mm. go the, literally the sketches come like this, boom, 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 and then, and then there's you know the Boomtown Rats doing a number, and then you've got. Um, you know, gorgeous, sexy dancers, hot gossip coming on, yeah. and then he comes on and does another quick, you know, sketch, and the crew are laughing. It's just, it's so anarchic. And, it um, makes you wonder what Kenny would make of today's technology, because he was really pushing it back then. Yeah, he really was. The, the multi-track tapes and things yeah, like that. Yeah, he, I mean, he, he, he really pushed the medium forward. He did it on radio, and mm. you know, he was a master technician when he did... Um, when he did his radio shows, he was better than any producer. You know, he would record all his jingles. Mm. And at the time, all these incredibly multifaceted, multi-layered vocal jingles, he would just, he'd literally bounce them back between two tapes. So he'd sing a line, bounce it back, sing over the top, mm. bounce it back, sing over the top. And well, he was an amazing singer, yeah, which is something no one ever He used to be a choir out. boy yeah. and he had perfect kind of pitch and he could, yeah. And then, but, and then he did the same in TV. He, 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 he you know, he loved getting his hands on these gadgets and mm. kind of, and pushing forward the medium, you know, he, he, all those visual effects that, you know, you look at his show now and, you know, they maybe seem a little bit dated, but mm. at the time, they were totally revolutionary for a TV show as well. I mean, that's know. the thing, I think his show really stands up today. Yeah. It's only when you suddenly see, as you said, the Boomtown Rats <laughs> or one of these really old acts that you've forgotten yeah. about. And you're like, wow, this is old. This is really yeah. old. I didn't it's, realize. It's amazing watching the show and the people that, you know, suddenly there's just, you know, it's David Bowie just doing yeah. a number and then... When Freddie it, Mercury used to appear on the show because yeah, that was yeah, his mate. Yeah. It, like once he was doing some North American tour and he just took the night off to come back. That's right. To appear yeah, with Kenny. Yeah. Totally unscripted. <laughs> just go and have fun. 
that, yeah. that wouldn't happen today. I know, it's, that's the thing, is that he's got this, such a, a spirit of, it, it's so free and he kind of just would turn up and do stuff and you look at his Christmas specials and it's just all of the crew and everyone just yeah. sitting around watching and he gets up and he does a little sketch and you know Billy Connolly's there you know corpsing throughout the sketches mm. it's just it's, it's so free and and you know unique it's brilliant and like you say you you don't get that sort of energy these days it's very hard to, to yeah. capture that you know so do you think, do you think this film will bring Kenny to a whole new audience? I really hope so. I really hope it kind of, um, you know, goes, goes some way to bringing him back towards the kind of celebration of him that I think he deserves. I, th I really think he should be mentioned in the same breath as who we class as the comic greats, yeah, the I mean, Pythons the goons and the and, Goons yeah, yeah, and everything like yeah. that. I think he's easily as influential and, and you know, uh, uh, as brilliant as, as, as a lot of those people. So... I really hope it does, actually. I hope it kind of, um, you know, bring, gets his shows and a, a new interest in him from a new, for a new generation, yeah. And, of course, Kenny's done. What, what's, what's next for Ollie? What's next for Ollie? Um, lots of things, really. I've kind of... Um, I'm very lucky that I managed to juggle lots of different things. So I run a theatre company. Uh, we've just come back from the Edinburgh Festival with a show uh, which is going off on tour next year. And then um, I write as well, so I'm developing a few... Uh, exciting projects actually me and Kate Kelly are looking for something to work cool. on together and I again. remember your, you did that ITV2 FM, the, FM uh, yeah, that's which right. is kind of funny that you know you did a sitcom in a radio station it, and now you've made a film about really the, the most iconic British yeah radio and broadcaster. to be honest you know uh, the lead character in that Lindsay that was played by Chris O'Dowd was very much in that mould he was you know I've always loved radio I've always had a real interest in particularly that kind of you know, edgy, indie sort of mm. talk radio type thing. And, um, yeah, so it's, it is very strange how, mm. how it, that it's sort of... Like I said, it was very serendipitous. All these little things kind of fell into place with this job. And it was... Um, yeah, it was, was meant to lucky. be. <laughs> Kenny was yeah. watching you. Yeah, Kenny was keeping an eye out for me. And yeah. you were a broadcast hotshot I was in a broadcast 2008. Hotshot. Yeah. I was a broadcast hotshot in 2005. High five. Yeah. Two I'm hot here. Shots. You're playing Kenny Everett. <laughs> we know who's done better. Yeah, two hot shots yeah. in one in one room. This is like it's going to explode. <laughs> well, Ali, thank you very much for coming You're in. Very it's a pleasure to meet you. And uh, you can see Best Possible Taste on BBC Four uh, this Wednesday at 9 p.m. Part of the Kenny Everett night. Yeah, yeah. So please watch, spread the word, um, because BBC Four have sadly had their drama about it. Cut. It's the greatest TV channel we have in Britain. I know, it's absolutely what, the, what the, the BBC right. is, is about. So everyone, please watch and uh, spread the word and yeah, make sure that you uh, tell the BBC that we love BBC4 and get them to give them its money back. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you, Ollie. You're welcome. Thank you.